Hello everyone, welcome to Energy Medicine for Healthy Living. I'm Dr. Melanie. Today we're gonna to talk about how to calm anxiety with energy medicine. Did you know anxiety, stress, and health are really intimately related? And it's not just energy medicine that sees a clear correlation. You see, Western medicine agrees. It's estimated that anxiety and stress account for 75 to 90% of doctor's visits and up to 90% of disease. Yes, you heard me right, 90%, isn't that crazy? According to the Anxiety and Depression Association of America, anxiety disorders affect 40 million adults in the United States age 18 and older. Women are twice as likely to be affected and that statistic doesn't even include children. These are actually really just staggering numbers. Fortunately, there are many ways we can address anxiety and stress to support our physical, emotional, and our energetic bodies. Anxiety and stress actually often go hand in hand, and some people may use the terms interchangeably. There are important yet really subtle differences though, so I'd like to explore that further. Anxiety is a feeling of worry and nervousness or unease, that kind of edgy. It's a sense that is often about something that will happen soon and the outcome may seem uncertain, so un if uncertainty is involved. And in contrast, stress is really a feeling of tension and it may be emotional or physical and it often stems from thoughts or events that trigger like anger or, or nervousness or some level of frustration. In terms of specific health issues, let's look at um, anxiety and stress have been linked to serious conditions like high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, headaches, arthritis, joint pain, asthma, depression, and there are many, many other symptoms as well. And if anxiety is negatively affecting your life, one of the first steps you can take is to get really curious. What causes you to feel anxious? In what ways does your anxiety manifest? Tap into exploring that and being with it and, and really getting curious about it. You see, everyone's triggers are absolutely different. Some people feel very anxious on, let's say, airplanes, while other people who are highly anxious may find they fly with ease. They feel very comfortable. But maybe those people really have difficulty with public speaking, being in front of a crowd or, or talking to a group of people. There really are differences as well in the symptoms of anxiety, which can include nausea, rapid heartbeat, and often insomnia, really difficulty falling asleep and staying asleep. You see, the good news is anxiety disorders are highly treatable and energy medicine techniques are a great way to empower yourself to calm your nervous system, interrupt the signal, reduce your anxiety, support your vagus nerve, and really actually rebalance your blood chemistry. And guess what? You can do them on yourself. <laughs> That's the great news about energy medicine. It's a great self-care tool. And so when it comes to energy, Working with self-testing or with a practitioner can help you determine more of how anxiety affects your unique energies. And often anxiety goes hand in hand with being ungrounded and with what's called triple warmer reactivity. So that would give you real specifics, but you can also just use the exercises I'm about to share with you today and be with them and, and practice them and mix and match them and see if there's something particularly that really helps you when your anxiety comes up. You see, when we're anxious, 80% of our blood flow leaves the forebrain. So your body can move into fight or flight response, but we have difficulty thinking clearly when that happens. There are many self-care tools and techniques that can help. Things that you can do like exercising, being out in nature, listening to music, one of my favorites, meditating, dancing, gardening, getting your hands in the dirt, engaging in any creative activity that really brings you joy, spending time with loved ones, being around your animals, and breath work can also be very easy and beneficial. Combining any of those approaches with energy medicine uh, can just be enormously helpful. And energy medicine on its own can also be a huge support. There really are dozens of simple exercises that we can look at for working with the sympathetic nervous system. And that's what governs this triple warmer meridian energy. It's our fight, flight, or freeze response. And it plays a major role in our anxiety level. 
it's really important that we realize we can address anxiety in multiple ways and that we we really have the power to help ourselves and that energy medicine can really be a powerful ally for you. So let's take a look at a few of my favorite energy medicine techniques for anxiety. The first one is called triple warmer reactivity pose. So you make a double OK sign with your thumb and your index finger. The side of this is going to be placed at your temples and the remaining fingers are going to go on your forehead. So it looks like this. Focusing on your breath, you can close your eyes if you like, but bring that anxiety to mind. If you know what those stressors are, focus on the stressors and begin to breathe. Inhale through the nose, exhale through the back of the throat. Now you can do that as often as you like and stay with it as long as you need to. We're going to switch though and place the thumb on the middle finger this time and same thing side of the temples, remaining fingers on the forehead. And this I call circulation sex reactivity pose. This taps into Tripper Warmer's yin meridian partner, circulation sex and pericardium, which really allows us to talk to the parasympathetic nervous system and your vagus nerve, that direct energy that supports the heart. So same thing, we're gonna focus on our breath. That gives you a way to balance sympathetic and parasympathetic energies. Now, another thing we can do is just talk to neurovasculars. Those are points on our head that when we're stressed, we can bring that blood back to our fore forebrain. So now we're gonna go to a very simple one. And it's something that we tend to do automatically without even realizing when we're under stress. And that's putting our hand on our forehead. And when we're stressed, how many times have you gone like, oh my God, or you hold your head because you just are in disbelief? Well, that's when the blood flow leaves our forebrain from the stress, placing your hand here will bring that blood flow back and allow us to think more clearly. You can also put one hand on the back of the head. These are neurovascular points, so they help to balance our nervous system and reduce stress. So let's, again, continue our breath. Of course, you can stay with this as long as you need to. You can do it sitting, standing, laying down. You can use it as often as needed. And I like to call it the international sign of distress. And boy, have we ever had a lot of stress going on in our world lately. I'm certain you're gonna find plenty of opportunities to be able to use these techniques. Oh, and that one felt really great for me. Another one we're going to do is called the Peacemaker. This also taps into our parasympathetic nervous system and gets right into supporting our vagus nerve. So we're gonna take the tip of your middle finger, tuck it in behind your earlobe. There's just a hollow space right there. It's actually a point on triple warmer meridian. We've been talking about triple warmer, triple warmer 17. You're gonna bring your hand so you're covering the side of your neck, the side of your throat. And there's no pressure here. You're just making contact, covering as much of that side as you can. Tip of the middle finger behind your earlobe. And again, resume your breath. This is one of my absolute favorites if you're having difficulty falling asleep because that stress wheel is just turning and turning. I love doing Peacemaker to fall asleep and you can use it anytime, anywhere. It's so easy. Now we're gonna go talk to the thymus gland. The thymus gland right here sits below the sternum in the middle of our upper chest. And when we are stressed, 
thumping our thymus will not only reduce stress, but it helps to boost our immune system. It, it's a great way, easy way to calm your nervous system. And we're going to combine this thymus thump with what I call crossover half peacemaker. It's a variation to the exercise you just did. So I'm going to take my left hand, cross it over my throat, tuck my middle finger behind the earlobe at that triple warmer 17 point. So now we're talking to the vagus nerve here that runs uh, along the side of the throat, to the thyroid gland, to the thymus, down into every organ in your body. So we're talking to the parasympathetic nervous system and we're talking to the thymus gland, which is communicating with our sympathetic nervous system. When you thump your thymus, you actually are generating T cells, and T cells are what we need to boost our immune function. So it's very, very easy and gentle. You can do either side, both sides, doesn't matter which one you do. And keep on breathing. That's the important point. Keep on breathing. <sighs> one of my all-time favorites. So another easy one is to take your palm, we're going back to the forehead here to bring blood back to our forebrain. This time the tip of your middle finger is gonna be at the very top of your head in the middle. This point is, the, is an gateway access to the pineal gland. It's a neurovascular point. It also activates and supports melatonin, which is important for you to have a good night's sleep. You can actually do just this, and that's a great easy one to do falling asleep or when you're feeling anxious, but I like to take, now we're going to take the thumb and go into that point behind the earlobe again, triple warmer 17, and just gently bring your fingers around your ear. And it doesn't matter which side you're on, you can do either side and both sides. And you see that triple warmer meridian line actually comes up around the ear to the temple. Just hold this, this area. It, I call it radiant circuit claw hand, if you want to know what this is, radiant circuit claw hand. So we're talking to triple warmer, we're talking to the sympathetic nervous system, and we're bringing blood back to our forebrain, and we're just calming the nervous system. Again, focus on your stressor as you're doing any of these exercises sizes and don't forget the breath work. That's equally important. You could do just breath work and that would also help. So here we go. Wow, that feels yummy. I'm going to do both sides. So tuck the thumb behind the earlobe claw hand around the ear, uh, palm of the hand on the forehead, tip of the middle finger on the top of the crown. <sighs> wow, okay, <laughs> that felt really great for me. I hope it felt wonderful for you too. So again, pick and choose. Try one or two. Take a couple of minutes with it. You can be longer if you like. You may find some seem to work better at a particular moment in time than another one. You don't have to do them all at once. That's my point. Mix and match and find what works for you. It may be different depending on what your, your stressor is, what level of anxiety. Take a marker too. Identify what level is your anxiety at. Pick an exercise, focus on the breath work, and then tune back into the stressor and identify has your anxiety meter dropped. That's my goal for each of you. The next time anxiety shows up, you can pick and choose and that you'll be able to vary the stress level. And the more you can do that and the sooner you can do it once you've experienced a stress and an anxiety flare up means you have great opportunity to remedy it before you're back at the doctor's office or, or doing something to support some other particular uh, imbalance or illness. Right now, actually more than ever, we can benefit from calming our nervous system and promoting health and well-being. Thank you for joining me and be well within.